W1, W2, and WC. Then we know exactly that W1, W2, W3 will be a basis for those by of A. And we are, we, that is a conclusion we arrived at the bottom of the slide here. We continue it by another kind of uh, exercise. Suppose that in a vector space, here is a three space. We are given a set S of vector like that. And you are required to find a basis for subspace of C space R3. Generated by V1, V2, V3 like that. So in order to do this kind of exercise, it is very easy, very simple. You write V1, V2, V3 like three rows of a matrix A. You can see it here. Then the, the subspace of R3 span by V1, V2, V3 is exactly the row space of the matrix A. Then for row space of a matrix A, you know how to find a basis for that. Here in the example here, you apply the Gaussian elimination to transform A into B. B is already in the row echelon form. B has two non-zero rows, W1 and W2. And because of that, uh, basis for row space of A is W1 and W2. It is here. And then you have another kind of exercise that is you need to find a basis for the column space of A. Here, the example explains to you how you can do it. The first method that is simple because you can chain it, you can transform it into the row space. I mean, first you take the transpose of A, then you, you have A, T, A transpose. Now, column space of A is exactly the row space of A, T, of A transpose. And in order to find basis for row space of any matrix, you know already how to do it. And here is a, the way to do You apply the Gaussian elimination, you get that thing. And B, is in row echelon form has three non-zero row W1, W2, WC. So those uh, uh, those uh, matrix makes uh, basis for row space of A transpose, or it is a basis for column space of A. But we can have another another way. Uh, you could keep consider. Uh, the matrix A like that, and I denoted the column of A by C1, C2, C3, and C4. Again, we apply Gaussian elimination. We chain it into the row echelon form, like that one. Then we consider the columns containing the leading one. In the picture here, we have three columns. We have three leading one here, and Corresponding to that, we have three columns, the first column, second column, and the fourth column. And those columns will make a basis for column space of B of that matrix. And because of that, the corresponding columns of A will be a basis for column space of A. Means if we consider here the first column, second column, and the fourth column, then the first column, the second column, and the fourth column of A will be a basis for column space of A. So in order to find, uh, to find the basis for column space of a matrix, we have two different methods to find. Next one. Next one. That is, we need to find non space of a matrix A. Many of you, many of students ask me how we can do it. So I explain to you once again, the way to find the, the non space of the matrix A, that is exactly the way we can find a uh, solution for a system of linear equation having infinitely many solutions. So let's see, we are considering a homogeneous system of linear equation A x equal zero. And in this, System A to be that matrix. 
and then we apply Gauss Jordan elimination. We get a matrix like that. In that matrix, uh, in that matrix already in a row echelon form, we consider the column containing the leading one. That is the first column and the third column. And because of that, the rest column, I mean the second columns and the four columns, will correspond to what we call the free variable. By free, by free, I mean we can we can give it any value. And here, x2 and x4 are free variable. So I give x2 the value s and x4 the value t. That is any any s or any t. And because of that, you you can you can see very easy that x3 x3 will be minus t and x1 will be minus 2s and minus 3t. Now we write down the solution. x equal x1, x2, x3, x4. x1 is here. x2 is f, x3 is minus t and x4 is t. And the only way you have to, the only things you have to do, that is, we need to, we need to write that solution in this form. It equal S time of that vector, please, uh, plus T time of that vector. So I denoted the first column here by V1 and the second column here is by V2. So we get our solution X will be S time of V1 plus T time of V2. And then we write the null space of A equal S V1 plus T V2 with any S and any T inside the real number. So that is the way we find the non spray non spray of a matrix A, or we can say that is the five solution spray of a system of equation. Then we continue by consider uh, the dimension of a uh, row spray and column spray. The first observation saying that for any matrix A, the dimension of row spray and the column spray are always the same, always the same. And because of that, those dimensions will be called the rank of A, denoted by, we denote it by the rank A like that. That is the dimension of row spray and also it is the dimension of column spray of A. <coughs> so on the other hand, we, we define already the, uh, the rank, that is the dimension of row spray and column spray. Then the dimension of the known spray of A will be called the nullity of A and denote it like that. And they are uh, the rank and the nullity, they are related to each other by the following way. Suppose that A is an M by M matrix, and suppose that we know already that the rank of A is A. Then the dimension of solution of A is equal to zero will be n minus a. n is here. So, and suppose that we know already the rank a, the rank of matrix a is a. Then the nullity will be n minus a, like that. And because of that, we can we write it, rewrite it in this form. That is n equals the rank of a plus nullity of a. I summarize that in the following. Uh, two remark number one and number two and once again you see the, the role important role of leading one or leading variable and free variable here the number of leading variable in the leading variable in uh, in the uh, homogeneous system of equation here the number of non it is the number of non-zero in the row echelon form of i that is the number of leading variable and so and it is exactly the rank of a so you can see the rank of a equals the number of leading variable equals the number of non-zero rows in row echelon form and it is equal the number of uh, columns containing the leading one 
And so what is it, the nullity of A? Nullity of A is a number of free variable in solving the system of linear equation A is equal to zero. So the number of free variable is a nullity. The number of leading variable is zero. So that is very easy to remember now. And we summarize it in that table. So I, I will not repeat it here. I just show here so that you can, can see how to find it. And next to that, we consider how, how we can solve a general system of linear equation. By general, I mean it is not, not necessarily homogeneous, means the right hand side is not obligatory to be on zero. Then the way we, we do it as follow. So first one, you need to get some particular solution. Trước hết bạn phải đoán ra được một nghiệm riêng nào đó là x. Tôi ký hiệu là xp ở đây. Then any other solution of the of the equation a x equal b will be of the form x equal xp plus x h. And here x h is a solution of the homogeneous system of equation a x equal zero. And x h how to find it? We know already in the previous slide. X hat là nghiệm của cái phương trình hệ phương trình tuyến tính thuần nhất tương ứng thì chúng ta đã biết cách giải nó ở trên trong mấy cái slide trước tôi vừa chứng vừa trình bày cho các bạn biết sẵn rồi. Vậy chúng ta chỉ cần biết một đoán ra được một cái nghiệm riêng xp nào đó là mọi nghiệm khác đều phải có dạng xp cộng với x hat. So that is the way we, we solve a non-homogeneous system of linear equation. Then, now, we have a criterion to know when a system of linear equation is consistent. Consistent means it has at least one solution. So, that, that claim says the system of linear equation AX would be is consistent if and only if B lies in the column space of A. That, that is the, uh, the one condition for us to see if a system is consistent or not. But we can, uh, we can explain that in another way. Not in another way, but in the way is much easier to see. Uh, for a system of linear equation A, H could be, we always has the coefficients matrix A. But, but besides that, we have the so-called augmented matrix, means on the right, right side of A, we add one more column, that is the column of the right-hand side of equation, the column B. Then, if augmented matrix and the coefficient matrix has equal rank, has the same rank, then the system AX equal B is consistent. And that condition is very easy for you to, is very easy for you to verify because we know the way how we can, how we can compute the rank of any matrix. And finally, we summarize some uh, equations claim, but only for the case of square matrices. Suppose that A is a square matrix of size n, of size n by n, or of order n. Then the following claim are equivalent. The first one say A is invertible matrix. The second one is AX equal B has a unique solution for any right hand side B, for any columns matrix B. And the next one say AX equal zero means homogeneous system of linear equation AX equal zero has only trivial solution. The next one say the rank of the matrix A equal N, that is the order of the side of the matrix A. And the next one says N rows vectors of A are linear, are linearly independent. Or the last one say N columns vector of A 
and linearly independent. So we have a six claim uh, equivalent to each other. And last, I remember that last, uh, last week, uh, one of, of you in the class said to me that we can add one more, one more claim equivalent to those things. That is, A has non-zero determinant. Yeah. So that is on what we studied last week. And we begin uh, a new, uh, no, not, uh, not new, now we